What is up guys? It's ya boy Rick. I sold my wallet and soul to Bungie Cacus here. I don't know how this guy knows I bought some silver recently, but guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel and let me know what you think my next intro should be. That comment section, it's absolutely wild. All right, today we're going to be showcasing the ultimate guide for the final boss of the brand new Grasp of Avarice dungeon introduced to Destiny 2 with the 30th anniversary update. In this video, we're going to showcase how to not only beat this encounter as fast as possible, but how to kill the boss as fast as possible. And this guide is geared toward master difficulty because hugely and super importantly, you can actually farm the artifice armor that drops from master. This armor comes with an extra mod slot so it's capable of doing some incredibly powerful things for your builds. However, of course, if we're showcasing how to one phase the boss on master, that's also obviously going to work in normal mode if you want to farm that instead. So let's get started here by talking about the tactics and going through what you want to do from the start to the finish of this encounter. First things first, the tip I have for you guys is hot swap your armor. So as you can see here, I am using the sleeper simulant to damage. We'll get more into the loadouts later, but that means I actually want to put on a chest piece with double linear fusion rifle reserves and then I'm going to rally the flag to get 16 sleeper shots instead of 13, and then I can switch my armor back to the normal piece, but those 16 shots will still remain. So it's an easy way to get an extra three shots or whatever of your heavy of choice. But continuing on from there, as you start the encounter, you actually want to rush the door that the bosses are going to spawn from. And this is so that you can trap and kill the two mini bosses as fast as possible, as you can see. Simply put down a well, and potentially even a bubble, but a well would work better, and just go to town at the shank and the marauder when they're right in front of you, when you're in the safety of this super, and when you have a lot of ammo to spare. Generally, because you're close quarters, you can use your special weapon. In this case, we're using uh, fusion rifles to just crank those guys pretty darn fast. It should be noted that when the Marauder dies, he's actually going to drop 10 engrams. You can go for these and plant them in the crystal as a safety net, but you don't actually need these. And often, especially on Master, you might die for trying to do that. So generally, we actually ignore those and then just make our way to kind of the rightmost platform. You'll see us go to that as soon as we're done killing these mini bosses because that is always where the first champion is going to spawn. And a normal, this is often where the first group of ads is going to spawn as well. So as a group, you can kill this guy, kill this champion pretty darn easily and the rest of the ads. Then you move on to kind of the middle platform. Sometimes there's going to be a champion that's spawning right there. If he's not there, simply make your way forward to the next platform. The champion will usually be there first. Kill that champion, move back to the middle, or again, you've already beaten the middle and then go to the last one. But the point is, Travel as a team. Don't drop off one guy. Go as a unit of three to kind of go and clear out the ads on all three platforms much more efficiently, much quicker, and then just kind of move back to one person on each of these outer platforms. Now, during this process, you will encounter a Scorch Vandal, so kill that guy and acquire a Scorch Cannon. Here's where things get a little interesting, because when you first beat this, you're probably going to hit the generator, spawn the engrams, collect them all, and deposit them and do it again. But what you really want to do is go for the 20 engram mark, because that is way more efficient. Here's how you're going to accomplish that. So the person with the Scorch Cannon is actually going to travel over to that middle platform. As you can see, he's not going to be the only guy there. In fact, someone else is in charge of that platform. But what you're going to do is shoot the middle generator. Yes, there's a middle generator, as you can see. And then as that's charging, head over to another platform. So you're going to release that. It's going to drop the 
10 different engrams for all three platforms. You know, you're on the left side, someone else is on the middle side where you just were, and someone else is on the right side. Everyone collects your 10, but now since you've moved platforms, you have a completely available non-closed generator that you can shoot again, as you can see. So you can get those 20 engrams to spawn in a very quick amount of time. And something super important to note, every 10 engrams you collect, you get all of your abilities back. So it's not just like 10 and you get a free super and then you gotta plant them and then go from one to 10 again. When you get to 10, you get a free super, you can use it and you'll see this in the background gameplay. And then when you get to 20, you'll get another free super. So you could be spamming your super, spamming your abilities to kill all the ads that may be spawning on your platform because you will get actually two supers back in this process. Obviously the last one you do want to save for boss DPS. So after each person has 20 stacks of burdened, everyone heads to the metal crystal to drop them off. Now it is gonna be easier to survive because you've already killed the two mini bosses and generally you've killed the adds on your sides. The boss is still kind of annoying. Just try to ring around the rosy him basically and avoid him by putting the crystal between you and him. If you have, you know, warlocks, healing wells and your grenade as a healing grenade are super, super good for surviving here because you do want to save your supers for the boss fight. So let's move on to that and talk about how to one phase this boss on master. So let's go over the loadouts. The first thing you're going to need is two different well warlocks with Luna faction boots. Uh, this is going to be fantastic. It's gonna let you reload substantially faster and drastically improve your range, which is really gonna matter when you're using a rapid fire fusion rifle, which we are. By the way, guys, Zur is selling right now an absolutely yoked 68 stat Luna faction boot. So if you don't have one for your warlock, you can pick up a great pair literally right now by going to Zur. Click the link up above. But we have two of those. Our heavy is going to be the sleeper simulant, guys. This is an absolutely fantastic weapon. It just received a buff. Now it has four rounds in the mag. It's doing way more damage than any other linear. It is just fantastic. We're using a Cartesian coordinate uh, with Vorpal as our secondary weapon. And then we all have auto rifles so we can have auto rifle anti-barrier rounds to deal with those uh, servitor barrier champions. Now that is for the two warlocks, but we also have one revenant hunter. This guy is really importantly using the divinity. So the divinity is absolutely incredible in this encounter. You probably saw it used earlier to great effect to kill the two mini bosses, especially against the shank. It gives that guy a crit, whereas you know, normally he has no crit at all, so it's gonna let you absolutely decimate him with your Cartesian or just a few sleeper shots. But most importantly, the debuff provided by Divinity stacks on top of the Particle Deconstruction debuff, whereas something like a Tether, that doesn't stack. He's also got an auto rifle, and then he's just got a sword for ad clear. The heavy can really be whatever you want. The Divinity is the key point. And the reason we're using Stasis is because both of the Warlocks are going to use Focusing Lens. This is going to let them do significantly more damage against enemies affected by Stasis in their own well. There was actually kind of a shadow nerf that happened recently. Previously, you know, if you put on Focusing Lens and you weren't the Warlock, if you were standing in a well, you'd still get this bonus. Now, it only applies to the actual Warlock who put down the well, and that's why we have two Well Warlocks. So both of them can get the Focusing Lens buff. And of course, since we're using Sleepers and Cartesians, we have Particle Deconstruction. So you put your wells down on kind of either side of this big crystalline area in the very middle, and you just go to town. As you can see, the hunter is going to pop his silence and squall to constantly inflict stasis damage 
on the boss. Now that may run out kind of halfway through, so just yeet a dust field grenade to reapply stasis, but the result, as you can see, is a potential one phase. And obviously, if you're one phasing this guy in master, you're going really fast. Like you're basically completing this master encounter as fast as you would be farming the normal encounter. And again, you have the advantage of getting that artifice armor, which is just yoked. However, one last tip I have for you guys, when you start the encounter, like this is something we found, damage is, is pretty close here to get the one phase, so you do want to shoot like one shot of Cartesian to start to get that particle deconstruction debuff up to times five as quickly as possible and then switch over to your sleeper. You want to start shooting your sleeper when it's already at times five. Another way to squeeze just a little bit more damage out is that the hunter can actually use the Mask of Bacchus to provide that 10% damage buff to arc weapons, the divinity, and also against stasis affected enemies as well I believe. Now again guys, if you're on normal difficulty, you don't have to go this intense, like just three sleepers should be enough to one phase this guy, and then just one well is good enough and the other two classes can be some other stuff. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.